Thank you, Freak. He's, he mentioned the new new. I want to talk about the new new mm -hmm. because it's not necessarily something that we attribute to Rush. We think of Vi, Lee Sin, all the aggressive junglers first in terms of fighting. Uh, uh, new aggressive in that he wants to be in your jungle. And Team Impulse essentially coming in with three smites. Nunu's Consume, his smite, and the Shivana TP smite top lane wreaked havoc in Santorin's jungle. They stole the strategy from Gravity that they played last week. And Santorin actually tweeted out last week, double smite, he's like, oh, good luck, Rush, right? So this is the jungler's nightmare. Now Rush is like, that's actually a good strat. I'm gonna go make Santorin's life a living hell. And they did that right off the get-go. Three buffs started on him. And they, it was a team effort, too. Nautilus came down and even participated in slowing down Santorin's jungle. So they had tabs on him from the get-go, and then they just tried to snowball it there. He even just walked up to lanes. He said, like, Nunu, right? He's like, oh, this champion that, like, Rush, he plays Vi and stuff like that. Rush has actually kind of transferred not his type of champion pool, but his play style to other champions. He's still going to gank. He's still going to walk up to lanes and snowball them and then just punch people in the face. Like, he's going to play that aggressive style, regardless of the champion, and I love seeing that. Yeah, and Nidalee is just a champion that needs to get early pressure off and early ganks, but you saw Rush was actually the person getting those ganks off. Part of that is because he got screwed over in the jungle by the double smite, and also part of that is just because with double smite and consume, you can control crabs really well. Mm -hmm. And crucially, Nidalee is the champion that's going to be roaming around between the jungle quadrants a lot, and if she gets spotted at any moment, it's really easy to dodge her gank if you, if you expect the spear to come. So Centaurin really didn't get anything going for his team, and that was a team comp, I feel, where you have a protect the AD sort of comp with Lulu Janna, and there's nobody really worth protecting. Urgot and Corky don't scale well into the late game, so they just had a time limit on their comp and didn't manage to do anything with it. Yeah, and these comps, when they clash together, as soon as you saw the Lulu and champions, like TIP was like movement speed increases to get to whoever they're trying to protect, and you saw it there. Everybody on that team can speed somebody up once Nautilus gets the righteous glory, right? So at the end of it, it was disengage kite back damage from TSM, so they can't force objectives. It's all TIP that get to arrive at the objectives, and TSM can't force their way in once that happens. So the comp from TIP and the reaction to the Lulu first pick, which they assumed was for Dyrus, was perfect for them, and their champion select was flawless. Yeah, uh, San or Santorin being relegated to farming through his jungle relieved a lot of pressure for Impulse's laners, and then as you mentioned, the clash of the two styles here, the entirely poke disengage composition versus the you're not getting away from us if we want to engage composition yeah, it, it, on the side of impulse and the objective control that they had. And that's what I want to look at next because that's what I feel. Team Impulse used their smite and the Nunu consumes, the double smite Nunu consume to perfectly control the global objectives on the map and put TSM in positions where they had to fight but had no way to engage. Yeah, even though the gold was even for so long, that fifth dragon creeped up on them so quickly, and that's what opened up the game. Because if it is an engage comp against the disengage, disengage has no way to get in. They kind of poke you from the outside with the nidalee, and once you're tanky enough, you have to kind of reevaluate your strategy because that was not working for them. TSM on your screen here, reevaluating, I have to assume, as you said, their strategy, double lift, the Lulu top for Dyrus. He started 0-2, wasn't incredibly successful on it, is the TP smite going to be a big issue in this game for him? Yeah, I was just going to point out that Darius is actually really slow on meta changes, and especially right here, it really showed. He died multiple times in the 2v1, which really, I mean, Darius dies a lot normally, but that was especially bad because it was early game versus a new new jungle. And not only that, but uh, crucially for TSM, Darius is almost never a damage threat. He's normally well, the punching bag of that team. They have Bjergsen and Wild Turtle doing a lot of damage. And in this meta, TIP is at such an advantage because if Impact gets going, and he's amazing at getting going, and he gets Skirmisher's Saber, you can reduce the damage one of those two threats does by 20% and just become impossibly tanky to deal with. So this meta is putting TSM at such a disadvantage with the way they're playing and how far behind they are, I guess, in uh, understanding it. Yeah, TIP have to find a way to, I mean, sorry, TSM have to find a way to shut down this meta from TIP, ban out top laners that use that smite, find something, and possibly adapt themselves. I don't know what they have prepared, but this is the meta that TIP stands a good chance against TSM. I also think that TSM needs to find a way to be more proactive. Yes. Because this poke disengage composition, as, we, as we've stated, although can have pressure from the Nidalee, and if you are ahead, great, you siege up against a turret because, uh, you know, Impulse can't do anything. But when that doesn't happen, we found TSM at a loss. They were just giving up 
dragon after dragon after dragon. We saw four dragons at 25 minutes. The fifth one came in soon after that, which led to a baron, which led to another fifth dragon. I mean, there's just no way back into it when they had no way to be proactive on their shot calls, which is normally what we, you know, praise TSM for, is that Bjergsen is a great shot caller, playmaker both individually, but also a fantastic shot caller. And, and they're not giving themselves the tools t to win games through their cohesion. Yeah, you'd have to be pretty much on point with perfect calls to run that type of disengage comp because TIP, all the movement speeds, run you down as soon as one person missteps and like takes two, one step out of position. It's just like Shivana with all these movement speed increases goes after them and you're not going to kill her with the challenging smite. So it's all about that shot calling, but being proactive is so hard to do with that comp. They need to draft something different. All that being said, double lift, it's not like this composition couldn't have worked, but as you stated, they didn't have a super huge late game threat in the Corky and the Urgot. So, I mean, I would assume that you would much rather have had a Callista, uh, you Jinx. know, a, a Jinx, yeah. you know, a Kogma even in that 80 carry position. Put more weight on Wild Turtle's shoulders. He showed us before that he can handle it. Yeah, I think that it's uh, a lot better if TSM gets a better late game in this next draft, but it's just so hard for them to close out games right now the way that they're playing because uh, if you have an, if you're playing against TIP and Impact is running one of these really tanky bruises with Skirmisher Saber, it becomes an impossible split push threat. So it's really hard for you to get up and group. As you saw, like when TSM did group, there were these really sloppy fights because they couldn't ever get together to get vision before the fight started. And when you're playing against Shivana with uh, Skirmisher Saber, like I said, it's just really hard. There's so much pressure on the map. You have to send one or two people to go deal with them. And it's just impossible for you to get to group up. So having a better late game will allow you to just kind of idle around and make TIP make the first move as opposed to you trying to get in there and force a fight when you're four dragons down. Mm -hmm. Well, the defending champs starting down 0-1 here in this series. We still have a lot of league left to play. And when we come back, the teams will re return to the Rift for round two between Team Impulse and TSF. The action continues after this. Adrian. Huh? Why God be so rude? <laughs> Don't you know Don't I'm you man too? <laughs> Yeah, Wasp is gonna buy a bit of time, and he gets healed! He's actually still alive! The fight's gonna continue, Apollo low on health, and Bjergsen putting a lot of damage down for the backside. Crazy fights, Santorin comes in, gets a second kill. Revenge for Bjergsen, chase on Apollo, who flashed away! Wow, that is rocket number one! Oh my god, Dyer's getting caught up as well, he explodes! Two kills in a row, Team Impulse looking to use these buffs to close the game out. Switch to Wild Turtle, the route is on. The absolute zero to kite the team away, and Wild Turtle now isolated. Team Impulse. Now, one third of the way to the finals for North American LCS.